from her country's continued sponsorship of terrorism, we have heard today the distinguished permanent representative of Pakistan make a fanciful and misleading presentation on the situation in the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. At the same time, we did not see any attempt by her to answer questions that are being posed repeatedly by the international community to Pakistan. Can the representative of Pakistan clarify how is it that terror sanctuaries and safe heavens in her country continue to flourish despite the Pakistan army's much wanted counter-terrorism operations and the billions of dollars of international counter-terrorism aid it obtains? Can the representative of Pakistan confirm that they do not use terrorist proxies and export terrorism as a matter of state policy? Mr. President, we have heard today the views of a dysfunctional state which builds atrocity upon atrocity on its own people, preaching about values of tolerance, democracy and human rights. We reject entirely these sermons. On the other hand, will the representative of Pakistan deny that the armed forces of her country committed one of the most extensive and heinous genocides in human history in 1971? Will the representative of Pakistan deny that its armed forces have used airstrikes and arti artillery against its own people repeatedly? Will the representative of Pakistan explain why is it that Pakistan civil society is being silenced by the plethora of heavily armed militias that go by names such as Jaish, meaning army, Lashkar, meaning army, Sepa, meaning soldiers, and Harkat, meaning armed movement? Finally, Mr. President, it appears that the distinguished representative of Pakistan did not hear clearly what our Minister of External Affairs stated during her address earlier today. I quote, the state of Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India and will always continue to do so. We hope that